good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ed Lazinski. I am from Datapipe, and uh, I have the privilege of uh, being, I think, the last presentation of the day. So, try to keep it short and sweet, and hopefully interesting and productive. Um, a little bit about Datapipe. We are a um, mission critical IT services provider. Uh, what does that mean? It means that we help companies manage their most complex IT infrastructure problems. You come to Datapipe when you have a complex problem, like a multi-tier application or a mix of cloud and, and uh, non-cloud infrastructure, and you need someone to manage it 24-7 so you can sleep at night. Um, we're recognized in the industry as a leader in this space. You'd be able to see that if the presentation uh, didn't bleed over itself, but you let pretty graphic on the right uh, shows some of our uh, customer accolades. We don't want to make this a sales pitch presentation, but uh, I do want to talk about some of our offerings that may be relevant to the people at this conference. Um, you know, Amazon's putting together a summit mixing people in the community, uh, Amazon uh, experts and uh, partners in the ecosystem and, and uh, things are appropriate to uh, talk about our Manage Amazon program. Uh, what we've done is we've taken our managed service offering, which is everything up to and including the application stack. So we go inside the OS, we go between the OS, we manage security, we manage um, the SLA, and we've applied that to Amazon infrastructure. And we've had this launch since, I think, November 2010, and it's been a very successful program. We're also an AWS reseller, so we can bundle this all together in, in sort of one package for you. And we're helping lots of uh, enterprises adopt uh, cloud through this program, taking over a lot of the heavy lifting from an operations and management perspective, and also a lot of startups as well that want to focus on uh, development and not on uh, cloud orchestration. Another service that is appropriate to talk about today, and I'll go into a lot more detail on, is our Direct Connect enabled services. And that's where we're leveraging our network, we're leveraging our capabilities to provide uh, unique hybrid IT solutions uh, that, that use Amazon's Direct Connect capabilities. Um, and I'll talk about that in more detail. So what is hybrid IT? What is hybrid? Um, I think a hybrid, I first think of like a Prius or a Nissan Volt. I guess a Nissan Volt is more pure electric, but something like that, right? But no, when I th when we think of hybrid in, 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 in the cloud business, think of um, a mix of public cloud and anything else, um, whether it's uh, on-prem or with a service provider. Uh, anytime you're, you're deploying something, whatever that unit of deployment is that uh, relies on or is it dependent on or flows, th flows data through, uh, uh, non-public cloud resources. And um, it's 2012, so no longer can uh, enterprise IT say to the cool cloud guys, get off my lawn. We don't want you here. With hybrid cloud, uh, with hybrid IT capabilities, we can now get the best of both worlds. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Before we go into some of the use cases, I think it's important to to note like why, uh, why is this available now? Why is, this, why is hybrid IT hot all of a sudden? What, what's making this a relevant conversation? Uh, I think the number one thing is that there's an ecosystem that's been built around Amazon and uh, a proven provider skills and products. So you can deploy complex solutions uh, in a reliable way. Um, from the enterprise perspective, uh, public cloud has become a proven a part of their, uh, of their strategy. So there's a confluence of events here that have allowed uh, a whole industry to be built around these sort of complex uh, IT problems. Second, open access networking. Obviously, um, without the ability to connect your infrastructure uh, into public cloud in a way that uh, lends itself to low latency and reliability, it, it, it's kind of hard to deploy reliable hybrid solutions. So with the advent of Amazon Direct Connect, we now have this capability which we didn't have in the past. And I think it's also important to note how uh, AWS uh, has led in, in, in coming out with a de facto uh, API standard. So 
uh, there is no industry standard API for cloud, right? There's no you know, consortium that's led anything at this point. It's all market driven. And Amazon's led that and you know, it's appropriate here because you look at stuff like Amazon S3 for storage, um, there's now the ability to have S3-like storage in your own facility that then backs up to Amazon with one communication mechanism that your developers can work on. And so S3 has become the standard. I think a lot that's driving the adoptability of, of uh, cloud in general and also for hybrid scenarios. So what are some of the challenges um, that we can solve with hybrid IT? Uh, you know, all of these are important, and I'll, I'll go through a couple of use cases for some of these, but um, things like regulatory compliance. Uh, a lot of companies have uh, very specific regulatory regimes that they need to maintain infrastructure uh, in, a, in an area that's not yet public cloud ready for whatever reason. And they need to be able to also be able to take advantage of public cloud uh, connectivity to those resources when appropriate. Disaster recovery. This is sort of like your on-ramp to cloud. Uh, if you're in, in an enterprise scenario, public cloud is a great place to start your DR strategy. And um, you know, making sure you can get that data there uh, in a reliable way with, with the proper uh, RPO and RTO um, is really important and, and, and is available now with things like Amazon Storage Gateway and service providers like Datapipe and how we're managing those sort of solutions for our customers. Uh, another big one is you know, high I.O., high performance database solutions, uh, you know, enterprise uh, database solutions that are just not cloud compatible today, things like Oracle Rack, SQL Enterprise. So we'll, we'll talk about some of that as well. We're seeing demand being driven uh, in like two different areas. One's a tactical area, and uh, we're seeing strategic drivers as well. So on the tactics side, we're seeing um, enterprises and uh, uh, you know, organizations that have pain in their, their on-premise or hosted applications that they need cloud uh, to solve those pains. They need to be able to burst the cloud, for example. Um, they need a, a long-term archiving solution and they can't afford to continue investing in CapEx heavy spinning disks. Um, we're seeing folks that have built their cloud infrastructure from the ground up in cloud also need some unique and diverse uh, hybrid solutions. They may need to deploy a specific type of uh, database or appliance or storage tiering that is not available in cloud today. And on the strategic side, we're seeing a lot of data center outsourcing projects, a lot of folks that are basically saying, I don't want to run my own data centers anymore. I need to go to cloud, but I can't put everything in cloud as fast as I need to make this move or by the time my lease expires. So I need reliable connectivity, I need reliable um, uh, support for my entire portfolio, and I'm, I'm gonna look at what I can move to cloud and what I can move to a, 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 a data center based solution, and I need these things to be connected and work together. So I went through some of this already in a little more detail, some of the popular use cases we're seeing uh, in this year, uh, high, high storage, high performance databases, bespoke database services. So we have customers that come to us with very unique pre-existing sort of baked in architecture that can't be changed very easily and the cost of having a cloud development team rebuild it, it's just not worth it for them, but they wanna take advantage of uh, you know, elasticity and on-demand resources for the rest of their infrastructure. Um, offsite data backup, it's coming from the other way. We're seeing a lot of that, customers that say, I need to store um, uh, my virtual machines, my servers, my log files, uh, I wanna store them in cloud and I want it done quickly and reliably and, and that's available today. We'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, we're still seeing some custom hardware integration, like security modules and search appliances and all sorts of weird stuff that goes in racks and doesn't quite fit inside a, of an uh, Ethernet port yet. So that kind of stuff is really driving a lot of that demand. So the first scenario I'll go in a little detail on is uh, offsite backup. And um, these are all like real customer use cases that we have. Um, we had a customer that was on, uh, on physical infrastructure and they, wanna, they needed to be able to back up their mission critical data somewhere. And it was 
also, it was for redundancy and for long-term archiving. So they had a seven-year archiving requirement, and the cost, again, of maintaining disk and power and all that kind of stuff obviously doesn't make sense anymore, and, and you should use cloud for that. Um, one of the things that we did was deploy it in a way that uh, leveraged low latency connectivity between data pipe facilities and Amazons. So in this scenario, this diagram's a little messy. The customer's running um, Red Hat app servers uh, in, in a facility. They're uh, connecting into Amazon via Direct Connect. We'll talk about how that works in a little bit. And um, their data is being backed up and stored on Amazon via Amazon Storage Gateway. And it, the way Amazon Storage Gateway works, it actually presents iSCSI LUNs. So I don't know how many technicians are here today, but you know it's a fairly standard way of adding drives and, and a fairly straightforward way to move data. So it's sort of enterprise friendly. You don't need to re-engineer your architecture to take advantage of this. Another scenario is um, a high performance database scenario. And I believe this one is gonna talk about SQL Server Enterprise. Um, SQL Server Enterprise requires a quorum drive and, and it basically only kind of really works well in, in traditional infrastructure scenarios. And this customer was sort of, you know, baked into that solution and, um, but wanted to take advantage of on-demand resources to manage their billing cycles. So they had a lot of, uh, data they need to process every month. They didn't want to pay for and manage um, physical infrastructure for those short cycles, and they needed to do it in a way that lended itself to uh, reliability and uh, low latency connectivity. So in this case, we, um, we engineered a solution where we took their um, SQL Server Enterprise environment, uh, we connected it into a SQL Standard environment in uh, AWS, uh, set up mirroring, um, which is sort of cloud-friendly over the wire to move data across in low latency, and then uh, provisioned EC2 instances to process billing data. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is running you know, millions of database transactions per day. This is a large, like, social game. Actually, the game is popular in South Korea, but they run all their stuff in the U.S. Um, the, uh, the application uh, leveraged security groups in AWS. Uh, we, we made sure that the connectivity was available between the, the database in the data center and the security group in AWS. And uh, we deployed it in a way that the end customer really, you know, they just managed to an SLA that we provided and then the, uh, their customer didn't see any difference. So they went, when they went to the billing server and picked up their bill, they had no idea whether they were coming from an Amazon server or a server sitting on-prem. It, it didn't really matter to them, and that's really the key here. You have to do this in a transparent way, I think. So, you know, it, you know deploy those things that you can deploy successfully that you, you don't want to change user habits, and I think that's uh, really important. So what do you need to do to deploy this? And I'm not sure in the audience here if there's a lot of IT managers or, or startup guys or whoever, but um, if you wanna you know, get into deploying these sort of things you know, more than once, or even the first time, you need to, you know, I think these are some of the key things you should be thinking about, um, get, either getting expertise in or, or finding that expertise elsewhere. Number one is uh, Amazon Direct Connect capability. Like I said, um, hybrid IT with Amazon is, uh, is extremely powerful when you have that network connectivity available. And we just see a tremendous amount of demand for that as customers see this as an on-ramp to cloud. It's a safe, easy way to start and then burst from there. Um, Dr. Vogels from Amazon, I think, coined the undifferentiated heavy lifting phrase. And um, for good or bad, if you want to deploy hybrid IT, you need to be able to have those capabilities. So you need to be able to manage or outsource or contract to facilities. You need to have a supply chain for the bits and pieces that are gonna be assembled around the hybrid components, inventory, build capabilities, et cetera. So those things kind of creep back into the picture with hybrid. Um, for most enterprises, they, they probably have some degree of that capability already today. Um, and then you know, there's always service providers in the ecosystem that can supply that to you. The networking bits are really 
um, interesting and um, definitely not uh, for the faint-hearted, I think, uh, as, as, as we deployed our first couple uh, Direct Connect-based solutions, hybrid solutions, we found that the networking piece was, you know, it, it, it definitely requires a lot of expertise. In fact, Gil Llanos is our cloud network manager and he runs our Direct Connect networking services and it's, uh, I think he'd agree that <laughs> it's not trivial. So having that ability to do network configuration management, definitely really important. Certainly from MSP like us, we're doing hundreds of customers, so the problem set that we have is different than an enterprise that has one problem set. So it's not impossible. It's just something you really need to dive into those documents and uh, figure out. And then obviously your operating systems and your software and your databases and all that stuff. Uh, the same stuff you have to deal with in any environment. Uh, obviously you need to be considerate and make sure you're, you're designing for that. So I'm gonna share for the people who did show up today, you're gonna see some secret sauce stuff as much as I could get away with sharing today um, about how we've organized our Direct Connect enabled service network uh, with Amazon. And uh, it's very high level, obviously. I'm not gonna give you IP addresses, but it does show you how, uh, you know, uh, level of complexity and also that it's definitely doable and it's real and it's available today, like I said before. So in this diagram on the left-hand side, you'll see, you see the Amazon network, you know, things like um, EC2 and VPC. Uh, Amazon supplies appliances or services like Internet Gateway and uh, a virtual gateway to uh, enable connectivity with these services. On the right-hand side, you see data pipe network. In this case, you, you know, both Datapipe and Amazon are provisioned through uh, Equinix in uh, North Virginia, and we're geographically close to each other. The, uh, on the Datapipe side is the customer solution uh, at the hybrid side, so it's gonna be your database services, your storage services, uh, you know, there's gonna be firewalls there, and all, all the same kind of stuff that you'd expect to see on each side. And, and then the middle part is where the interesting stuff is, is how you connect these things together. So. Um, we use a technology called uh, Ethernet over MPLS or MPLS pseudo wire to allow for VLANs, which are network domains, for lack of a better word, to transcend Amazon and go into a customer solution or data. You know, if, if you're doing this on your own, it would be your VLAN. In our case, we have many of these for each customer, and it allows for that kind of connectivity between the two services, all low latency all manageable at scale. Again, if you're an enterprise um, IT manager, if you're a startup, or regardless of the problem you're trying to solve, um, hopefully some of this information is useful for you. Um, share with you how we go about our, our essential process for designing hybrid. Uh, we're, it's very solution design heavy up front. It's definitely a measure twice, cut once type of arrangement. One of the reasons why is, just in terms of best practice, it's nice to be able to kind of know what you're doing before you start doing it. But it also, on the hybrid side, um, unlike EC2, I don't get to throw a server away if uh, something isn't configured correctly. So we want to be sure of that. Uh, and uh, you know, so if you're, if you're an, I'd say an IT manager and you're offering this kind of service to your departments, you know, definitely want to have a dialogue around solution design. We have some infrastructure design and configuration tools, excuse me, in-house that we use to, to, to do that. Um, we've also built uh, provisioning services. These provisioning services essentially reserve the uh, space uh, on the Amazon side, on, on the network side, on, on the data pipe side for these services. So uh, everything from ensuring that we have governance over the AWS account to uh, understanding the provisioning requirements for the network and, and, and the database or the storage. All that's done pre-build. Um, there's build services, and those build services are essentially actually implementing the work, right? So that's everything from configuring a security group in AWS or a VPC to um, installing an operating system or an application. Um, we hand over a solution runbook Again, if you're, on the, if you're on the inside and you're offering this to your customers, especially with cloud, a great way to so show value, I think, is to hand back over to your business owner on the other side a run book or, or a description of the solution so they understand the value you provided and also if there's emergency issues, that sort of thing, they know what the process is for uh, remedying those. 
And then we move into an operations and support mode and basically operate this hybrid IT infrastructure going forward. So happy to open up the questions. That's what I have today. I have a number of colleagues here from Datapipe, um, Bill Dolan, a VP of Business Development, uh, Rob Bruner, Senior Cloud Architect, Kevin and uh, Gil as well. So any questions or, or comments, I'm happy to answer, or these folks can as well. Sure. Um, you know, we, we charge, you know, the typical uh, AWS, the, the port fee. We don't really up, upcharge that, um, depending on what you're configuring for. So you may have, a, a, you know, two 10 gig connections and, you know, and everywhere we connect, and that's going to be a different pricing than, than a one single gig or a shared connection. And then we have, um, you, know, uh, you know, standard pricing for different service levels like databases and servers, that sort of thing. Bill can help you with that. But it's, it's OpEx, just like AWS. We try to blend it all together. We don't, we, you know, you give one bill, Amazon, data, it's all together. You don't, you're not having to put up a big CapEx investment. You know, we just assume that no one wants to do that anymore, right? It's hybrid, so it's, the, you know, it's what, what are you trying to achieve, right? So at, we have customers that are running the Oracle rack in, in non-Amazon, connected into Amazon, and then all their app and web tiers in AWS, and it's all managed under one solution footprint. Yeah, that's a really good question. So we, um, it depends, if you already had an AWS account, we can, uh, we assume the account, we, there's, a pro, there's a business process to do that, and then you start getting your bills from us, basically, and then you start accessing our other services on top of it. Um, we have a credential storage on our side um, for that purpose, uh, and if we create the account, uh, if you're a new customer, for example, we'll hand back, we'll hand you, you know, provisioned keys and secrets through a secure mechanism from there as part of our provisioning process. We're connected to AWS in uh, Virginia, up to New Jersey, which is more of a long-term storage endpoint, and uh, San Jose, and then we're in London as well. We're in Asia as well, but we're not connectable there. Yeah, this uh, typical storage, if, if you're just looking for um, EBS-like storage, we would just recommend EBS, right? But if you're looking for sort of tier one type storage that is uh, going to be pegged right into an Oracle Rack cluster or something like that, it's a completely different cost. It, it is sold on a gigabyte a month model, just like AWS. We try to line that up. Sorry. Yes, we do. And we, we issue BAAs. You know, it's a negotiated contract item. It's not a turnkey, hit a button type of thing. But yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it.